Welcome to this edition of Labor Vision. I'm Bob Delaney, Executive Director of the Institute for Labor Studies and Research. Labor Vision, a production of the Institute, focuses on topics of importance to working Rhode Island families. We hope you enjoy this evening's edition. Hi, welcome to Labor Vision. This is the production of the Rhode Island Institute for Labor Studies and Research. My name is Tom Carr. I work with the Rhode Island AFL-CIO. Today with me are Erica Hammond from the Rhode Island Institute and Justin Kelly from the, from the Rhode Island Painters and Allied Trades. Uh, today we're here to talk about the wor Workers Memorial um, uh, that is planned for Two weeks from now? Yeah, that's right, Tom. So we're, uh, myself as the business representative for the Rhode Island Painters and Allied Trades, uh, along with the collaboration of uh, Fuerza Laboral, uh, the Rhode Island Labor History Society, the Rhode Island Coalition for Occupational Safety and Health, the AFL-CIO, and the rest of the building trades, will be holding a Workers' Memorial Day observance this April 27th. That's a Saturday, and we're going to be down in Pawtucket at the Hope Artist Village at 1005 Main Street from 10 to 12. Okay. And this is, this is part of a bigger event, which is nationwide too, right? It is, yeah. Workers Memorial Day is interesting because it actually coincides with uh, the anniversary of the founding of OSHA. Um, so in 1970, on April 28th, uh, the enabling legislation was passed to set up the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. And in 1971, uh, the, the administration actually took effect. And so all around the country from 1971 to today, uh, labor and community organizations and good-minded civic folks across the country get together and hold Worker Memorial Day events. Um, you know, and it has a variety of different means, but the biggest thing is that, you know, nobody goes to work to die. Right. Nobody goes to work to get hurt. We go to work to be able to provide for ourselves and our families. Uh, and Workers Memorial Day draws attention to the fact that all too often um, companies, corporations, people with money push down on health and safety interests and push down on legislation and on policies that will create safe working conditions for workers, mm -hmm. for working people. And we've got an, an administration now that is fond of deregulation. Yeah, the Trump administration is no friend to the working person, no friend to working families, and uh, you know, deregulation sounds great, and sometimes it makes sense if there's overly onerous burdens on things like permitting, but regulations are put in place for a reason, and that's to protect communities, that's to protect the laws that we have in place, and it's to protect working people. Okay, so now we're doing, we're doing this event in Pawtucket for a reason, um, you picked this this place for a to put out a particular message, and what yeah. is that? Yeah, that's right, Tom. So on October 22nd this past year, uh, there was an accident at a construction site, um, and it's the old Hope Webbing uh, Mill. Uh, they're being renovated currently. The mill's being renovated, and it's being made into apartments. There was a floor collapse that occurred. Now, the developer there is Urban Smart Growth, uh, the local vice president of operations is a man by the name of Michael Gadzacko. Michael's firm hired Metric Construction out of Massachusetts, who then in turn hired AD Contracting Services out of Massachusetts. The workers worked for AD Contracting Services, and when the floor collapse happened, three of them were hurt, one critically. We haven't been able to ascertain the identities of the, those workers yet, but I have my concerns, as well as other people, that those workers may not have gotten proper treatment in terms of access to workers' compensation, may not have gotten a fair shake. Because if you don't know your rights and you have a vulnerability, whether you're an immigrant worker or you have any other reason why someone might try to take advantage of you, oftentimes you don't get due recourse and justice in an, when an accident like that occurs. So we're going to be drawing attention, like I said, again, out front from 10 to 11, 
at the uh, 1005 Main Street location of the Hobaris Village. And then behind the back at 200 Easton Street, we're going to be having from 11 to 12 a rally that's going to draw to attention what happened not only at that site in Pawtucket and that floor collapse, but just in general talk about the rights of working people to a safe job and safe working conditions. So it's a, it's a basically, a, it's not just a protest of you know what went went on there. It's 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 basically a celebration of of workers in general, um, you know. And then we're you're pointing out what happened there that day. Yeah, and, we're and, yeah we're going to point out what happened there. We're going to talk about why that shouldn't have happened. Construction accidents like that are almost 100 percent preventable. Right. Uh, there are safety regulations put in place that. Workers, if you don't have access to proper training, if you don't know your rights, if you don't have a union to have your back to assert those rights, then oftentimes corners get cut, things happen, people push on you, they want the job done yesterday, and then accidents like that occur. And it, I still maintain accidents like that are 100% preventable, and they're everybody's responsibility to, to make sure that they don't happen. But it's most important that the people at the top do what they have to do to make sure that no worker is ever hurt like that. And when you're trying to squeeze every last bit of profit out of a situation, that doesn't happen. Right. And you have plan are you having plans to get some of these people that were there to speak at the event? Well, like I said, we haven't actually identified the workers who were uh, affected at that accident, but we do have workers um, who have been in similar situations at different, um, have suffered from different worksite accidents, uh, and we're going to read the names of people who sadly have passed away uh, at work in the last several years in the New England area, and we're going to invite uh, some other workers to come up and share their stories. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know we're we're very glad to be able to partner with people like Forest Labor All and the AFL CIO, um, uh, the Institute for Labor Studies and Research, the History Society to be able to draw those connections out and make uh, make this a full you know community and labor event. Because this isn't really just in the constru construction industries either. It, this happens industry wide, like you know, like in the healthcare industry, in the mining industry. Yeah, you know. It can, it can happen in any workplace. Uh, I mean, look, uh, today, just in West Virginia, I think there was some news, right? Um, uh, yeah, well, I, I, I think I saw it this morning that the West Virginia governor, his mining company, is now owes, what, $4 million in fines for Imagine. these companies he owns. Imagine that. Yeah. And then, you know, I, uh, I know that there's a uh, rise in violence in workplaces. Um, you know, we can talk about everything from schools to uh, healthcare industry. And um, you know, I think you were speaking with some folks uh, from the healthcare industry the other day, right, Erica? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this happens all the time. You see it in hospitals. You see it in nursing homes. Um, when safe staffing isn't in place or a union isn't um, there, if a place doesn't have a union that can vouch for them and explain to them how important safe staffing is and how it's important to have the right number um, of people on uh, right number of people there with the number of patients you have all the time um, nurses are put in a situation where they have to do something that's not exactly their job to be doing but they have to do it for the safety of um, the individuals and that puts them at danger because either they're forced to do um, more work or they're forced to lo work longer hours or they're forced to have say double the amount of patients they should be having and it puts both the patient and the worker at risk. Mm -hmm. And think about what happened to the General Assembly this week the passing of the overtime bill for the, the firefighters. That protects yeah. them a little bit as well. Right, Absolutely. right. And so we know that there, there is a right way to do things. And that happens in a variety of ways. The best way is still for workers to form a union on the job and collectively bargain with their companies so that they know they have legal contractual assurances that you're going to have a safe workplace, good wages, and good benefits. Uh, but there's also things that we can do legislatively and policy-wise. And one of the things we want to do on April 27th is use this as a launching point and use this as a way to say to the state that we're very happy with the economic development and the tax incentives that exist, but we need some changes. 
because that site there is receiving tax credits from the state of Rhode Island uh -huh. at uh, the project. And we need to have some things in there that protect workers to make sure that local workers are hired, that there's safe working conditions, that good area standard wages and benefits are paid, and things that ensure that people have recourse if those aren't happening. Because we can't be subsidizing companies that are doing the wrong thing and hurting working people or suppressing wages. It's just not right. You pretty much took my last question, which is, so what do we do to combat the erosion of workplace safety? Well, the best thing that you can do is come on out on April 27th. Come out Saturday, April 27th. Again, 1005 Main Street, 10 a.m. Please come on down. We want to see you out there. Uh, help us hold the sign. Be part of the rally. And you can also go to the website that we have, which is Rhode Island oh. Workers Memorial Day .com, Okay. Go to that website, find us on social media. There's an event that's happening. You can see it on Facebook and Twitter. Um, you can follow the Painters Union on Twitter, and you can look for the Labor History Society and myself personally, Justin Kelly, on Facebook. You can find the events. Uh, and we're going to have a petition that we're going to set up that you'll also be able to find on the website and through social media that you can sign on to to say back to the state that please make sure that we're protecting local workers and providing jobs for local people that are good paying middle class jobs. But like you said also, you look for an organizer in, in your workplace. Like you, right. you yourself, you're, you're pretty talented at organizing. Your Thank wife you. is, is at SEIU. That's true. In the healthcare yeah. industry, yeah. you know, yeah. organizing as well, so. Yeah. So if you want a union, talk to Heather or I, Heather or Dustin <laughs> Kelly, talk to Erica Hammond, talk to Tom Carr. It's your right. Whether you're native born or you're an immigrant to this country, you're black, you're white, you're Asian, you're native, whatever your race, ethnicity, man or woman, native born or immigrant, it's your right to have a union. It's your right to collectively bargain with your employer and I would encourage you to do so. It's your right to have a work, uh, safe workplace. It is. Be yeah. safe when you go to work. Yeah, because that's, and that's what Workers Memorial Day is all about. Because yeah. again, I love that. I saw it on a shirt. Uh, I won't you know, take credit for the slogan, but no one goes to work to die. No one goes to work to get hurt. Yeah. And um, you know, I would include Forza Laboral in there as well. I mean, talk to somebody, course. talk yeah. to somebody over there as well. I mean, they're they're yeah. forming cooperatives now. I mean, yes. it's, it's legal so, to yeah. operate a business as a cooperative now. So yeah, Forza so. is a great great organization. The IUPAT is very proud to be a partner with Forza Laboral, yeah. and will continue to be so uh, yes. for as long as they're here. Yes, I've I've been I've been emailing back and forth with Raul uh, the last couple of days trying to promote his business. Uh, yeah. Their model is fantastic. I think it's the way to go. Yeah. Um, owners as business, you know the as a, the business owners. It's, yeah. It's a great model. We're we're very excited actually from the perspective of the IUPAT to work with. Um, particularly immigrant workers that face some impediments to just joining a trade union to set up workers' cooperatives mm -hmm. that then can be union signatories. So you can get all the benefits that are pre-existing and set up the pension and health care systems that we have in place. So uh, workers' cooperatives is something we're very excited about, fully in support of, mm -hmm. yep. and I think is a, a great, great model. Um, um, Tom, I just want to tell you one last thing that uh, Stop and Shop went out on strike as of 1 p.m. Oh, today. Yes. And uh, we hope that all of our brothers and sisters in the labor movement and everyone who's watching will make sure not to cross the picket line yes. and get out there and support those workers and make sure, because the longer the picket line, the shorter the strike. Yes, absolutely. And uh, support your union brothers and sisters out there. Don't cross that picket line. I just saw the email come through on my phone as, as we were speaking. Yeah. So yeah, definitely stay solid with those, those union workers. Uh, support them. Make sure that they... Uh, the, the owners of Stop and Shop uh, come to come back to the table and do the right thing. That's right. All right, so uh, we are about out of time here, so thank you guys very much for coming in today. This has been Labor Vision. Uh, thank you for watching, and have a good night. Welcome to Labor Vision, the production of the Rhode Island Institute of Labor Studies and Research. I'm Tom Carr. I work for the Rhode Island AFL-CIO. Today with us is Councilwoman Carmen Castillo of the Providence City Council. Welcome today. Um, you, um, congratulations by the way, you've had a, um, 
uh, documentary film made about your recent success um, as a councilwoman in Providence, uh, and, and it tells the story of how you came up, and um, you know what, why don't you just tell me a little bit of um, how the project came about? Um, you know, that idea is not my idea. This is San Margo, my friend. Um, when she come to me the first time to ask me to do that thing, I say, of course not. And as she convinced me, but it's, um, it's about, you know, how we can inspire uh, minority women like me to fight. And, you know, like Carmen did it, you can do, you can do it too. So um, mostly the thing in that movie is to show the people, like minority people, women or men, whatever, can do whatever they want, only so they can follow their dreams. Mi visión es que haya fuente de ingreso para que mi vecindario progrese, que se levante en lucha. Housekeeping. Era muy difícil cuando tuve un comentario en una radio local diciendo, ¿y qué pasa esa sirviente en el City Hall? Porque es lo único que sabe pasar vacuum. Y ahí fue donde empezó mi verdadera lucha. I'm here not only represent the city council. I'm here today represent my community, workers' community. Alguien me dijo a mí un día que la política es el arte de negociar. Yo estoy ahí para hacer un negocio, pero un negocio justo. Margot was um, an organizer with your union. Well, yes. That's how you knew her originally, right? Yes. And your union was, let's give yes. you a union to plug here. We are, we are organizer um, together when, when we organize the hotel workers, because I'm the housekeeping in the hotel, only hotel now. And we organized her together. And after she left, she don't organize anymore. She moved the city. Um, we have a like a contact, like phone sometimes, what are you doing and blah, blah, blah. But when I won my first uh, election by city council, she had that idea. She came to me and, you know, it's crazy, but <laughs> she did it. <laughs> and, she did and, it. And let's just get your, your union in here. You're, you, you work, you're a member of Unite Here. Unite Here. Okay, I just wanted to get that in there. I wanted yeah, to sure. we are Unite Here in that time. I are uh, Unite Here Local 217. Yep. When I started, now we are Local 26. Local but 26. still at uh, the same union, Unite Here. Yep. And I just wanted to make sure you got that in yes. there. Yes. We are, we, are we are union's workers. Yep. And the way she made the film was interesting. It's, it's in your voice. You basically narrate the whole film, right? Um, it's from your point of view. And th that was important to both of you, right? Th yes. That's the way you wanted to tell the story. Yes. Um, it's more important that time for her, but I believe she inspired me too because, um, you know, when I fell, I say, you know, and when I cry, when I don't want to do it, when she's, she's, you know, she's there, she give me a heart and she say, I know it's hard, so if you don't want to do it, but, you know, at the same time, I say, oh, you know, she's maybe, she's producer, she want to do something, and okay, okay, I'm done. Take a big breath and continue. Mm -hmm. yes. So, and she basically followed you around with oh, the yeah. camera the, the, while that you're working. That camera can be around at the hotel when I'm working and the clean rooms and the city hall. When we do delegation, everywhere in my in my home, in my uh, my family, everywhere. That can't be easy. It's not. 
is <laughs> crazy. <laughs> what did um, what did your family think about this when she was doing this? Uh, you know, especially my daughters. Um, uh, they are so proud of me. They they are like you know they give me a, like a big heart because um, they see me like fight everywhere all the time and do a lot of stuff. Um, fight for justice, fight for the workers, fight for the all the you know all the unions and stuff. But when they see you know like everything together in that movie, they understand like. Wow, mommy do a lot of stuff. Yeah, mommy do a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like, and that's part of the narrative. You you knew that when you got elected that you were still going to be working during the day, and doing the city's business at night, right? Yes, that's that's uh, my life is running like that for seven years already. You know, I need to I work in the morning housekeeping Monday to Friday. Sometimes I need to work the weekend when I did, uh, when I need to do something in the day in the week early. I need to go working in the weekend in the hotel to get that day off. So, for mostly the time I get out, and my job to get in the city hall. And so it's basically from the hotel. Rush, rush, rush. Sometimes, and right straight Most over, right time. straight over to the to, to the city hall. My other place. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's close, right? <laughs> it's close, but sometimes you know, like I'm, I get out. Uh, sometimes I get out at four when my meeting is at five thirty, so I have a like chance to go in home a little bit, take a coffee, take a, a little shower to wake up again. Uh -huh. And it's starting over. All over again. It's like a whole other day starting on yeah. top of your first day. Yes, because yeah. I know, um, you know, I I get a lot of committees uh, in the city hall um, because I want to really care about, you know, the city business. I want to I want to be like carefully and, and look everything happening in here. So in a, in effect, you were you were basically AOC before there was an AOC. Yeah. No. So they, they, they are like, uh, they, do, <laughs> they don't like me too much, I think. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Does it really matter? I yeah. mean, you're, you're there. I mean, and you earned your spot just yeah. like everybody else. Exactly. That's so. what I say. You know, like when someone, you know, like because uh, I'm a lawyer and I say I'm the housekeeping and I'm the same between you. So? <laughs> <laughs> working, working people deserve to be up there as well, right? Exactly. We have a, we have a brain too, and we're thinking too. You know. So it's not like because, um, you know, some people think like you don't go to college, you don't know anything. I go to college in my country, but I'm here on the room attender. Right. And I don't care. I don't be offended because I be a room attender. I love my job. I love what I'm doing, and I love to protect people. Yep. That's just, that's just me. That's you know that's and there's nothing wrong with that. And so, okay, another one, another one last question about the movie. Like, uh, it's to get to see it around here, people have to ask for a screening, right? Yes. So. Yes, they gotta go in the website. Uh, I can't really remember what is the website, but you know, if you can get, I believe it's Councilwoman. Um, dot org or dot com, you can find that information over here and you can, if you, uh, someone want a screening, um, you go in, in the website, you ask for it and you can screen it in a lot of places. I think we can get that information, we might even put it at the bottom of our screen for the show and so we can get that out to people and they can ask for a screening and they can get it out and people can yeah. see that. And, see how it, it was actually done. I, I think people would be very interested in that. Yeah, so, so uh, you know, they want a screening. They screening in a lot of city already, but I can be in everywhere. Yeah. For me, it's, it's um, limited uh, to go to everywhere when they show. They want to, oh, can she come? Can she come? Blah, blah, blah. But, you know, end of the day, uh, I can take, in, like, too much time out of the city. And, and, Every time when I, you know, like, sometimes in my job, ask me, are you working in here? I say, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and you, and we're filming here on April 9th, just so people know, but, um, actually April 10th, um, but, um, and you have a, a red, couple of red carpets to walk coming up. So I just wanted to get that out for people to know. One in New York and another one you yeah, said in Yeah, we North have Carolina. a festival, um, uh, they have an, in the festival in New York this Saturday. 
and they are screening in New York um, this Saturday. On uh, Sunday, we go to North Carolina because Monday we have uh, the all day, you know, um, they do a screening, but they, they have uh, like different, um, dif different interview with different people uh, mm -hmm. and they want to know uh, also, you know, how is the political and, and uh, organizers because and the, you know, and the union organizer, but and the political um, person, how I can divide this to then and and that's just be like all day Monday and we back home. Like I I back home like I be in Boston like around ten o'clock in the night. I need to go back to Rhode Island. Oh yeah. So yeah. those questions are going to be a lot tougher than mine. In May, <laughs> in May, in May fifth, I be in Boston to oh. to other screening, and they have like a lot of and the website. They have like a, everywhere they showing right now. Oh, that's great. Okay, that's good that we, that's good that you tell me that. That's good that we that that's listed. All right, um, all right. So um, in your time in office, what do you think has changed the most since you first got elected? Uh, you know, like the way they, um, the way they decided, you know, where the money is going, mm -hmm. and what, uh, you know, I might, and when you build my neighborhood, mm -hmm. it's totally different when one started, mm -hmm. um, how they look right now because, um, you know, they put more interest and I, uh, it's forced more to do stuff in that part of the city, oh. and also, you know, to be here to take care, like. You know, like we need to deserve like at the other part of the city. We are a part of the city, and and I'm here to fight all the time to get something for us. That's it. And okay, so and what do you think? What do you think you've made the biggest difference for for in your part of the city? Uh, you know, the um, the bigger thing with I'm doing right now is uh, getting money for uh, repair, like. Community center, like I get like 1.6 uh, million um, to get that money in here. Like I need to be like crazy to see, you know, how how uh, we can repair that building to uh, give it back to the community. It's a lot of money. We need like five more million dollars to fix it, but we have something for started mm -hmm. and. Difficult is um, when you are frustrated because, you know, when taxes go up and you can stop. <laughs> and, you know, now, you know, I want to let the people know they, they review, like, you know, the cuts for the house. So mm. they put, like, oh, you know, see someone, if you have a home between me and you home, you sell it for $200,000, but mine is 150 uh, you know, my values go up, but, but in the same time, my taxes go up. Sometimes we don't know what is the better, you know, the property go get it, get, get it and, 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 and where you get the money to pay your taxes yep. in that time, so yep. it's a lot. So that, that leads me perfectly into my last question. So what do you think the biggest challenge is facing the city going forward? Um, you know, like when we start, don't say the water. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh. Um, they, uh, you know, like we see like um, that city grow up little by little when I came here in 1994, it's uh, totally different. Now you can feel like a more uh, welcome in that city, like, you know, more, the view is different too. And the challenge is, you know, every time when we have a major, they don't like me. No. So that's just a good challenge for me because I don't know why. <laughs> but you know. Like, but you, you, you're looking forward to, ch to facing those challenges, right? Yes. All right, that, that, that's, all, that's what we look forward to. We're, yes, we're, and uh, I, I'm, because uh, I'm here to make sure, like, you know, respect for everybody and, you know, like, Everybody can be deserved the same thing. With I don't, I don't see like different white and, and black and Latinos and any race. I believe we are you know we are the same. We are we have the same body blob and you know even you know someone is more beautiful. Someone is not um, no not that beautiful. But end of the day, we are humans, and that's just the more important for everybody.
And you always know that your union brothers and sisters are behind you 100%, right? Yes. All right. Well, yes. this has been this has been si se puede. <laughs> si se puede. <laughs> this has been Labor Vision. Thank you very much for coming and thank you very much for working for watching. Thank, thank you. you very much. Bye-bye. Have a good night. Done. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Labor Vision. We appreciate your input and encourage your comments. Labor Vision can be seen on this channel three times each week, Tuesday at 7 p.m., Thursday at 8 p.m., and Saturday at 5 p.m.